ranking all the Pixar movies. The first video I ever did on this channel was a Pixar ranking. The most viewed video on this channel right now is another Pixar ranking. And now with the release of Lightyear, we're gonna do this one last time. Every Pixar movie ranked from worst to best. Good Dinosaur is coming in last place. This is just a pathetic attempt at a movie. It is no redeeming qualities, two horrible characters, and it's just a movie you would never expect Pixar to make. It's pointless and lazy and generic. I don't know anyone who thinks this is worthy of the Pixar name. It's just garbage. Lightyear. Their newest film is really bad, and it's nothing from what you'd expect from a Lightyear movie. I could talk about how it makes no sense that this is supposedly a 90s movie that Andy watched in Toy Story, and how this inspired that toy it doesn't work like that. But really, my biggest problem is this ending. There were parts of this movie that were kind of enjoyable. The ending tried to make you think like Buzz was the hero, he did something good, but he didn't. He just recruited this team of really bad space rangers. And he didn't save anyone. Zerg, in my opinion, was the hero of this movie because he was actually trying to save people. They ruined Zerg though. It all comes down to why did they make this movie? It's because they wanted to capitalize on the popularity of the character. Not because this movie makes sense inside of Pixar. Not because it's a story that was actually good and they wanted to tell. It's just because they knew they would get some money. They made a movie about Buzz Lightyear even though it makes no sense that it's about him. So this is easily one of my least favorites from the studio. Turning Red. This was a complicated one. I think I like Pixar so much because anyone can watch their movies, but then they made Turning Red, which just feels like it's for such a small audience. And I'm a high school guy. The movie's not made for me, unfortunately. I watched it because it's Pixar, but I shouldn't have watched it, because it's not made for me. So that's why it's this low on the list. But also, what was the message they were trying to send? At the end, whatever the main character, she accepts that she can turn into the panda, like she keeps that power. So what's the message? That you should embrace your strong emotions, your out of control emotions. That's not really a good message. I don't know if this movie's bad, but it just wasn't for me. So, yeah. Toy Story 4. So I've always had this very low on my Pixar rankings on this channel, and uh, I still don't like it, but not because of the reasons I've said in the other rankings. I, I don't really have problems with the character arcs, Woody's arc, I don't have problems with that anymore. I just think this is a lame movie. It did not need to be made. It's really, it's kind of boring, it's dull and it is such a much worse conclusion to the franchise than Toy Story 3. If people don't see that it just completely abandons the themes of the first three, it does, but that's not the reason I dislike it, I just think it's really dull and boring. Next is going to be Brave. I don't dislike this movie at all. From now on, these are movies that I at least enjoy, and Brave has some cool animation, some cool setting, and the characters are meh. I think it had a lot of potential, uh, and it's fine, but it's not going to be any higher on the list than it already is. Cars 2, most people's absolute least favorite from Pixar. Not for me, it's okay, it's fine, it's fun, but why was this the direction they took the Cars franchise? This is just completely way off from how they started the franchise. They made Mater the lead, and they just made it... The style was completely different from what they made the first Cars, which is one of my favorites. I don't know why they decided to make a spy movie out of the Cars franchise. It's one of the weirdest decisions they've ever made, but I don't think this movie's bad. It's just a fun adventure, even though it never should have become one of their widely released films. They could have just made it a short adventure. It's like it's a one of those Mater Tall Tales shorts, but made into a full-length movie, which it never should have been. A Bug's Life. I don't even remember this movie really, I just know it has the worst animation and some very forgettable characters. I don't hate it, I don't like it. Whatever. Finding Dory. Be honest, when you've decided to watch a Pixar film, have you ever chosen to watch Finding Dory? I don't think anyone has, because if you're gonna, if you're gonna watch an animated fish movie, 
you're either gonna watch Finding Nemo or Shark Tale. You're never gonna choose Finding Dory. There's no reason for this movie to exist. It has some good moments, some good new characters, but it's extremely forgettable. It's one of those that they never should have made. It doesn't really have a purpose. Finding Nemo was good on its own. Luca. I can't make myself care about this movie. It has summer vibes, some very cool animation, and that's about it. I know Pixar is just nowhere near what they used to be, but every film they made used to be so special. And now, they just have movies like Lightyear and Luca. And Luca's fine, Luca's fun, but I'm never gonna choose to watch it, just like Finding Dory. It is enjoyable, but it's just not what I want this studio to do. They can do so much better stuff, but instead they're making stuff like Luca, which is just nothing special, and I'm not gonna remember it. I don't want this whole first half of the video to just be talking about how much worse Pixar has gotten ever since their beginning, but, you know, that's just the fact of it. Incredibles 2 perfectly shows what Pixar has become ever since the first Incredibles. It's obvious to see. Incredibles 2 is nowhere near the original. It's very disappointing. Every character is disappointing. All the new additions are horrible too. And again, I like this movie when I'm watching it. I think it's a good film, but it's nowhere near what I would expect it to be, especially after this taking 14 years or however many years it took to create a sequel to The Incredibles. It should have been so much better. I would expect something better than this. And actually, I think a lot of this movie is really good. The dialogue is sometimes just as great as the first one, but then that finale is just very disappointing. I hope we get an Incredibles 3 that is a lot better than this. Wally. Okay, listen, Wally is great. I know this placement is too low to some of you, but this is when Pixar gets great. I really like Wally. I like how it's sort of divided into two different movies. One where Wally is just on Earth with Eve, and then the second when they're on the Axiom with all the humans. Both parts of the movie are great. It's kind of crazy that this movie actually exists. That someone came up with this idea, and it came to life super well. It actually worked so well. This is kind of the exact opposite of Luca. It was not playing it safe at all. It's very ambitious very different. That's what I love about Pixar. They have crazy ideas and they make them work incredibly well. This was at their peak and this is a great film for them, just not one of my absolute favorites. Monsters University, another one of their movies where you could argue that they never should have made it. And yes, it is one of their useless films, kind of, but it's one of their better useless films. I really like Monsters University just because I really like Mike and Sully as characters. I like seeing them, their background. And then that ending is very underrated. The message of this film is actually really great. It took a while to lead up to it. Most of it was just a, just a pretty fun time. But when that ending hits, it really all comes together. And I really like this film. Finding Nemo, another one of their absolute classic films that I've never specifically connected to as much as a lot of people, but I can't deny it is one of their legendary films that they did so well. It has the great message and it has all the great characters. I really do like Finding Nemo. I don't choose to watch it that often, but it's one of their classics. You have to respect it. Onward, still a bit underrated, but I really like the characters and I really like the payoff at the ending. They had that idea and they worked up to it, but in the middle there, some of it's not that great. I really like Onward. I thought it should promise for the future of Pixar. They fell down again after it, but I but I really think this film is great. It's kind of what I just said for Monsters University, which these movies have the same director, Dan Scanlon. I think he has the idea for the ending, but then the lead up to it is just a bit messy. Hopefully he can make a third film that just perfects all of it. I really like both of his films. They just have some big problems in the middle. Toy Story 2, basically a perfect sequel, builds on everything the first movie did so incredibly well, and brings in more themes that were going to be continued in Toy Story 3, about what really is the purpose of a toy. Honestly, I feel like every character is at their best in this film, every single one of them is enjoyable in this, plus, 
All the Star Wars references make this a lot better. Really good sequel, but for some reason, I like the first and the third in the franchise more than this. I don't know. Soul. Really their only recent film that really captures how good they used to be, and I think that's because Pete Docter directed it. He has always been the best Pixar director, in my opinion, and this is another one of his ambitious films that just worked. It worked for me. Honestly, it has some of the most grounded themes in all of Pixar that adults can think about. And again, this is what Pixar should be. Everything that Pete Docter is doing, with his films in particular, those are the ones that I want more of. Everyone can get something out of it. Some pretty good characters, but amazing themes and an amazing ending. Coco, cracking the top 10. This is another one of their best original films from the last few years. It was in the middle of their useless sequels, like Cars 3, Finding Dory, Toy Story 4, Incredibles 2, all those movies that shouldn't have been made. In between all those was Coco, another glimpse into what this studio used to be. How can you not really like Coco? It's a movie about remembering your dead relatives, and it is one of the most hard-hitting films in that way. But it's also extremely fun to watch, and the world of it, the animation, all the characters, all of it's really fun, and it comes together perfectly in that ending. What's there not to like about this movie? Ratatouille. What makes this movie so good? It's about a rat who wants to cook, and the rat helps this human cook by pulling his hair. And yet, this is an idea that we all got used to and we all accepted while watching this movie. How does Pixar do that? When they were at their peak, they took the weirdest concepts ever and made them work. And they also included the grounded themes and great characters inside of that weird concept to make it one of their own movies. That's what makes Pixar better. That's what separates them from the other studios because they did this over and over again. The weirdest things turn into the greatest movies. What specifically makes Ratatouille this high? A lot of people have explained it better than me. This is where it is on my list. Cars 3. Calm down. Calm down. I'll give you a minute. Yeah. I really like Cars 3. I'm loyal to the Cars franchise and just seeing another movie that actually has the same style and is loyal to the first Cars movie, that's enough for me to put, the, put it this high. I am so glad they made another quality movie out of this franchise after whoever decided to make Cars to a spy adventure. I'm so glad they backtracked and made it more like the first film. And yeah, it's nowhere near as good as the first movie, I'll admit, but I still enjoy it a lot. It's just a really cool film, a really cool conclusion, and this is my favorite of Pixar's useless films. And next is Toy Story 3 the perfect conclusion to this franchise. The beginning in Andy's house when they think they're gonna be thrown away, when Andy doesn't care about them anymore, and then the ending, and the entire ending, when all the toys think they're gonna be burned up, and then when Andy gives all of them away. The beginning and the ending of this movie are absolutely perfect, 10 out of 10. In the middle, some of the stuff at Sunnyside, not the best, and it doesn't take away that this is the perfect conclusion should have been the last one they ever made. Somehow they made a Toy Story movie this epic, and that's why Toy Story 4 was so bad after this. It was just so lame compared to what they did with this. And yeah, this is the best Pixar sequel they ever made. Toy Story. The kickoff to this studio, still one of the absolute best. We all know why this movie's great. The introduction of Buzz Lightyear, Woody, Every character is amazing. I just think you cannot dislike this film. It really changed animated movies forever and started possibly the best animated franchise of all time. Inside Out, another example of how Pete Docter attempted to save the studio at arguably their worst time ever. The movie that came after this was The Good Dinosaur. So all of that was out the window, but Inside Out alone, one of their best. The ambitious concept of Exploring emotions as characters paid off incredibly well. Exploring the whole world of Inside Out is amazing. And the great message that every emotion is just as important as happiness. I think this is probably the most emotional film out of 
any Pixar movie. What else can I say? It's one of their best of all time. I really don't think there's any problems with this movie, and yeah, it's easily one of my favorites. Some people have said everyone likes this movie so much because of the opening alone, that they judge it just on the opening alone, but I think that's just completely untrue. It's not just the opening, it's really the whole thing, but especially the ending matches the greatness of that opening. The ending is just as good, the scrapbook scene, but the whole adventure has a purpose too. Even though it feels completely different from the opening, it all has a purpose in Carl's character, and yet another example of an insane concept just coming together to make one of their best films. And this has always been in my top three Pixar. Right now it's number four, but it is so close. It's just the top three are perfect. The Incredibles. It is perfect. I think this is Pixar's smartest film because literally every single line and every single scene has a purpose. Everything comes together. Everything leads to something else. Everything comes back later to have a purpose in the movie. And that is just the most satisfying thing a movie can be. The smartest dialogue in any Pixar movie, some of the best character arcs, and just some of the best characters in general. A superhero team that just puts the Fantastic Four to shame. Also, some have said that I look like Dash from The Incredibles. Do I look like Dash from The Incredibles? Comment below. But yeah, Incredibles is a masterpiece. It's one of my favorite movies. 10 out of 10, absolute perfection. Monsters, Inc. Oh, it's at number two now. Yes, it is. That doesn't mean I like it any less. It's in my top 10 favorite movies of all time. The most creative film ever made. The concept, the best I've ever seen. Just a concept in a world that I could only dream of making up. It's the genius way that they built off a concept that everyone is familiar with and made it into an entire world to explore. One of Pixar's best ideas was making this movie. But not only that, it has the best character duo, the best music, and I guess if you want more thoughts, check out my old video essay on it. That's where I explain everything. But this is, this is a perfect movie. It might be Pixar's best, I don't know, but it's not my number one. Cars. I can tell you, me liking this movie so much, being in my top three favorite movies of all time, and my number one Pixar film, it is not just because of nostalgia. I truly think this is their most underrated film. It is a masterpiece, I don't care what anyone says. Okay, I guess I just said Monsters, Inc. had the best music. It had the best score. Cars has the best soundtrack. It has the best style, has the best characters. Everything about Cars, I love. Lightning McQueen's character arc in this movie is the best in any Pixar movie. This movie was slowly moving down my favorites list because I thought I was outgrowing it, but no, it's impossible. Cars is too likable. A lot of people have said it got worse over the years, but no, this movie is still impossibly good. If you have it near the bottom of your list, like even on the bottom half of it, re-watch it. Really try to understand my perspective. Like, it's just an incredible film. It does everything right, and I don't think my favorite Pixar movie is ever gonna change again. This is the one that's the most special to me, even though Monsters, Inc. was my favorite for a long time, I think Cars is just the number one. So thank you for watching everyone, that was my last, final Pixar ranking that I will ever do on this channel. See you in the next video.